Hello traders, hello everyone and welcome to our new video analysis where I will give an update on Bitcoin. As you know, uh, we have been looking for higher prices on Bitcoin recently since mid of March. Then we expected pullback and now we are trading quite slow here, not breaking higher, not breaking lower. So now the question is where we go from here. Well, I will do an analysis from scratch here. Okay, so Bitcoin is definitely in a very strong uptrend. But however, you have to be very careful whenever you want to participate in this market after this strong and explosive move, because there is still a um, very big downside risk compared to the upside potential, at least in the next few months. So whenever you want to participate in this bull trend, you want to wait on a corrective price action. So looking at this weekly chart here, we may see one big correction coming still this year. OK, because I'm looking for a five wave movement. Now, here we are still tracking wave three and not and I'm not sure if this wave three is already finished. Why I think that we could see a little bit of more upside is because when I'm looking at the daily chart. OK, let me copy these levels here. So if I look to this daily chart, you can actually see that market is now moving sideways here. OK, so sideways, I mean, here around or below 60, around 60,000. OK, so we have a few potential different scenarios. But what is exciting is that both scenarios suggest more upside in the near term. So I will try to label now the substructor for a wave three here. So uh, I will take these impulses. So this is wave one. You had a wave two. Then I believe this was an extended way free so i will finish way free here looks like that this is way four and more upside can be seen here for uh for way five so you can see that way four is not really clear is it finished here or maybe still consolidating why because um i can see that market is just moving sideways sometimes helps if you just try to label very easily these consolidations with such a square okay this just is trying to avoid some kind of a noise that market uh, that market uh, will try to make with these spikes to new highs and to, to new lows and then just move sideways. It's it stays in the range. So this is how I usually uh, try to explain what the correction is. So here we have a pose, okay, and this pose can now be even a running triangle here. Why a running triangle? Well, if we go even to lower time frames or just zoom this wave structure what you will notice is that here we have actually a free wave movement to a new high and always when that occurs it means that this is probably a structure that belongs to a higher degree more core uh, more complex corrective pattern so I believe that this could be a triangle because we also then have seen a free wave drop. So if I label this a triangle, then this should be something like, like that. Okay. So you would have an A, B, C, D, E subwaves. So the reason why I'm looking for this scenario, which by the way is my primary scenario, is because this was a free wave movement to a new high and the following drop was also in free waves. And now we have quite nice bounce here. So now the question is how to maybe look for potential opportunities here whenever you have a deal with the triangle, where it really depends what kind of a trader are you. Are you going to wait on a completed wave E and maybe then look for entries after a push higher? Uh, let me just try to, uh, to make this here with a visual presentation. So let's assume that wave is his finished here okay and that you want to wait on a completed correction before you want to look for potential opportunities on the long side well based on the theory you should this or you should wait on this wave e to complete and wait on a market to confirm that you are correct meaning you want to see a reaction from your wave e support levels so when you see a bounce and a break above this red trend line and a daily close above wave D point, well, that's the important evidence that triangle has most likely ended. So you are actually waiting on a breakout of the range. And in such case, 
stop loss can be placed beneath wave A swing level. Okay, that's one approach. Some traders have a different approach, more aggressive one, meaning that when market comes to the downside, they want to look and try to potentially to catch uh, a low of that current drop that is tra that um, a trader is tracking. So in such case, maybe some would look already for entries here around 53,000. Okay, but whenever you are looking for wave uh, for entries at the end of wave E, in my opinion, it's just much better and maybe even more important to put your stop loss below or around wave A level if possible and not around wave C level. Why? Well, because let's try to forget on Elliott waves for a minute and just focus on basics. So you want to buy something at the bottom of the range. And whenever you are buying something at the bottom of the range, it's very important to put your stop loss outside of the range, beneath your extremes, price extremes of the, within this range. And in such case, this is not wave C level, which after all, it made a very nice bounce from 50,000, but it should be here around 43,000. So of course, this is still far away, but if again, um, maybe wave E will come to the downside, okay, then still you will have lower prices to enter. Of course, you will not enter here at this wave D point if you think this is going to really to be a triangle. So these are two di different interpretations. And one reason why I think it's very important to uh, have invalidation level here at this wave A level, whenever you are hunting wave E, is because there were a lot of cases when wave, when this triangle become even more complex. So price can even move beneath wave C and this could still be a triangle later, okay? And you will just have even more complex patterns. So in such case, what should happen is this wave E should still remain in place, wave A. Okay, so uh, because you are buying at the lower side of the market, just this is very simple, because you're buying at the lower side of the range, this market, stop loss should be outside of the range. Whenever you are tracking uh, for a break, potential break above the range, and then you're playing the breakout, well, in such case, stop loss obviously could be much higher. Okay, very simple perspective. Now, the another um, potential wave count here for Bitcoin is also that maybe this wave three, let's say that it has ended down here, and then what this could be is potential ending diagonal. Now, ending the diagonal is also very interesting pattern, uh, especially when it it's finished because when it's finished market will bring us uh, back a lot of volatility momentum will increase but normally this will happen in the opposite side however what is again very important is that ending diagonal even that's going to be the case is still incomplete okay what i'm seeing here is potential uh, let me label the subwaves here real quickly this could be a potential wave one, you have a wave two, you have a wave three, you have a wave four, you are waiting for a wave five. So why I think that ending diagonal is actually also very good uh, valid wave count is, as I said before, we have seen earlier a free wave movement to a new high, which is very important and common whenever we have a deal with an ending diagonal, okay? Because structures are free waves in wave one, then wave two, same structure for wave three, wave four, and now also expect then three waves up for a wave five. So in my opinion, Bitcoin still in the short term, there can be some opportunities on the long side, but as I said, maybe after pullbacks, uh, <clears throat> in the near future, whenever we see straight move up here from here, then I think that you really should be watching this potential ending diagonal because 65,000 could then be next important reversal zone. I'm not saying that ending diagonal again would be the case. I just think it should be uh, on our list if maybe something suddenly uh, happens on the opposite side. Let's rather be prepared than surprised. Okay. Therese, thank you very much for your attention. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please uh, give me a like if you like the video, leave a commentary below, or if you have questions, please 
make sure to contact me. Okay, have a good day. Bye.